In question 11 of this series, we're told the deflation y of a simply supported beam with a concentrated load p at a distance x from the left end of the beam is given by the equation shown here, where e is the modulus of elasticity, i is the moment of inertia of the beam's cross section. Find the value of x at which the deflation is a maximum for an 8 meter long beam with a concentrated load 2 meters from the right. What we have to do here is find the distance x from the left end at which the deflation is a maximum. Here's a closer look at the diagram provided. The equation luckily for us, and this is usually the hard part of optimization, is given to us. And it's written right here where everything here is a constant except for x and y. So what we have to do is take the derivative of this equation with respect to x using the product rule and then set it equal to zero to find the critical points. From there we can do a test to see if that critical point will be a maximum or minimum. Let's start with the derivative. The derivative of y is dy over dx. And like I mentioned earlier, we're taking the product rule here. So we can take the derivative of this and multiply it to that and then add the derivative of this multiplied to that. Or what you could do is multiply this into each of these terms, essentially expanding the equation and then using the power rule from there. But I'll commit to the product rule. The derivative of PBX over 6LEI is equal to everything except for this X because remember all of these letters are constants. Think of all those letters as being a fraction to x. If you take the derivative, for example, of 1 over 2x, you simply get 1 over 2. So the derivative of this is pb over 6lei. And we're going to leave this part the way it is. l squared minus x squared minus b squared. Now we're going to take the derivative of this expression and multiply it to this expression. The derivative of l to the power of 2, remember that's a constant, that's 0. The derivative of negative x to the power of 2 is negative 2x. And the derivative of negative b squared is 0 as well. So we have plus negative 2x. And we're going to leave this part the way it is. Now that we found the derivative, we can substitute the values that they gave us in the question. Take a look. They told us that it is an 8 meter long beam. So L is equal to 8 and B is equal to 2. L is equal to 8 and B is equal to 2. You can substitute these now or you can continue to clean up this equation as much as you can before setting it equal to 0. And I think I'll do that first. So I'll leave these on the side and see if I can factor out anything and reduce this down to something that's easier to read. We have dy over dx. That part doesn't change. I can factor out pb over 6lei. If I do that, I end up with pb over 6lei. And that leaves me with l squared minus x squared minus b squared minus 2x to the power of 2. I got negative 2x to the power of 2 because by taking out this pb over 6lei, I'm left with negative 2x times x, which is negative 2x squared. Now I can collect like terms, take a look, this term and this term are alike, I can subtract them. If I subtract them I end up with negative 3x squared, pb over 6lei times l squared minus 3x squared minus b squared. Now I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. First, I'll divide both sides by PB over 6LEI. That will cancel this out. It will go away. And then we have this part that's liberated. Once this goes to 1, there's no need for these brackets. So if I bring this negative 3x squared over, that becomes positive 3x squared. L squared minus B squared. Solving for x from here is easy. Divide both sides by 3 and then square root. If I divide both sides by 3 and square root, I end up with this expression where the answer is plus minus. Now I can substitute L and B into here. Now you see why I waited. It actually is a lot easier to evaluate. We're left with 64 minus 4 over 3. We'll take the square root of that next, which gives us 
plus minus 4.47 meters. We drop the negative value since x cannot be negative in this problem. Once you have this number, we need to find out whether this is a maximum or minimum. But it is clear from the physical problem that our point is a maximum. There's no need for a test. I mean, technically, you can take the second derivative of this and substitute the critical point, 4.47, into it, and you'll end up with a negative number. A negative output tells us that there's a maximum. But there's no point, because it's the only plausible number we get as a critical point. And so there you have it. That is how to solve an optimization problem in calculus.